Throughout the history of philosophy, philosophers haven't talked much about humor. When they did, it was often negative. For example, Plato and Hobbes saw laughter as a way of showing superiority or scorn. Kant and Schopenhauer had a different idea, suggesting laughter comes from the unexpected. Modern philosopher Thomas Nagel takes a unique approach. He believes humor is our essential response to being human. Nagel thinks our lives are absurd, not because they won't matter in the long run or because we are small in the universe, but because of the clash between taking life seriously and realizing how random and contingent it is. Think of how an ordinary individual sweats over his appearance, his health, his sex life, his emotional honesty, his social utility, his self-knowledge, the quality of his ties with family, colleagues, and friends, how well he does his job, whether he understands the world and what is going on in it. Leading a human life is full-time occupation to which everyone devotes decades of intense concern. Nigel explains that we can step back and see the randomness of our goals and pursuits. Even though we're deeply involved in the act of living, we can also recognize the arbitrary nature of our choices. This ability to see ourselves from an external perspective is what makes our lives absurd. To avoid this absurdity, we try to supply meaning to our lives through our role in something larger than ourselves. In service to society, the state, the revolution, the progress of history, the advance of science or religion and the glory of God. Unlike the common view that our insignificance makes life absurd, Nagel sees it differently. He says our absurdity comes from our capacity to view ourselves without assuming anything, understanding our specific existence in the world. He compares our situation to that of mice, like us mice have to work to stay alive. But unlike us, their existence is unabsurd. This is because mice lack the required capacity for self-consciousness and self-transcendence that would enable them to see that they're only mice. If a mouse were to suddenly gain such abilities, Nagel says his life would become absurd since self-awareness would not make him cease to be a mouse and would not enable him to rise above his mousely strivings. Bringing his newfound self-consciousness with him, he would have to return to his meager yet frantic life, full of doubts that he was unable to answer, but also full of purposes that he was unable to abandon. Nigel's idea of absurdity, where we take our lives seriously, even though we acknowledge their uncertainty, differs slightly from the more popular concept presented by the leading figure of absurdism, French philosopher Albert Camus. He said, the absurdity of the human condition arises from our need for meaning in a meaningless world. But for Nagel, this doesn't quite hit the mark. Absurdity arises not from our relationship to the world, he thinks, but from our human capacity to step back and adopt a universe eye view of our existence. Both Nagel and Camus agree that life's absurdity cannot be escaped, but they differ in their recommended response. Camus suggests defiance, while Nagel sees absurdity as a manifestation of our advanced characteristics and recommends recognizing it with irony instead of heroism or despair. Basically, Nagel believes our absurdity doesn't require intense distress or defiance. Instead, we should acknowledge it as a sign of our advanced abilities and approach life with irony. Life is absurd, but it's also interesting, and we can navigate it with a sense of humor understanding its absurdity while moving forward.